What's going on? This is Pat Daly with TrueTransient.com. This video you're about to watch is with David and Rebecca Waller. They're a couple that grow food in their house, plants, vegetables, with no soil, without soil at all. They're uh, growing plants, vegetables, herbs, uh, and they also sell these vegetables and make money from this whole little experiment they got going on. So uh, this video is gonna show how they make money with this equipment and with these vegetables. And then if you wanna see part one where they explain the bulk of their whole process on how to grow the food and everything, uh, go to this video right here, boom, click that. Uh, without further ado, let's hop into this video with David and Rebecca Waller. Well, I'm Rebecca, I'm David's wife, and we grow the towers together. And we also just started growing microgreens this season. So we got this entire setup, the all these trays, all the, the racks, the seeds, um, pretty much everything off of Amazon. And, uh, oh, pardon me, we got the seeds off of True Leaf Market. Oh, yeah. Leaf. But uh, pretty much yeah. everything was from Amazon from start to finish here. At less than $350 to get started, which at this point now is selling to restaurants, we've made our money back. Yeah. So that's exciting. Even it's only the been, stuff you're growing? Yeah, so it's oh, only cool. been a couple weeks now. Um, so these, I'm about to get the floor a little wet. <laughs> so these are a spicy mix microgreen. All right, so there's like arugula and um, other leafy greens in here. These are, let me see how old these are. Oh, nine, eight. So these are 10 days old. Okay. These are 10 days old and um, they're really fun to squish around. Yeah, it's like a chia pet. <laughs> yeah, it is, it totally is. Yeah. Um, so these, I have a 10 by 10 every single week that I'm selling to a local restaurant called Suda here in town. It's a Japanese fine dining restaurant. So sushi chefs are really into microgreens and really into the edible flowers that David talked about on the tower here, the borage flowers. Borage? Borage. 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 Yeah. borage. borage. <laughs> French. Yes. Borage. <laughs> borage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've been corrected on how to say it a couple times. So I just Whatever, call it. Whatever, you're growing up. I call it borage. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody yeah. will mm. probably correct me again at some point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this oh, is yeah, good this. Yeah. this is an experimental variety that I haven't yet sold. Um, but one of the sushi chefs said that he really loved working with these. This is bull's blood, um, just a common name for it, but it's also known as just like a beet microgreen. Oh, and you can great. see how ruby red the stems are. I seeded this one a little sparingly, so next time I'll probably seed it more. That way it's more plush, like that spicy mix is. Right. Uh, but yeah, these ones I can sell for more than just these green ones because they're way prettier. Okay. And so definitely, those are beets. these mm -hmm. are beets. Yeah. So if you were to take this and plop that in the ground, like you're going to have a crop of beets. So that's one of the reasons I really like working with the microgreens is, for example, this spicy mix. If this one doesn't sell one week, I can let this grow. And then all of a sudden it's a baby green. Mm -hmm. And then if we still don't need it as baby greens, I can I could plant it in the ground or pop it in some of them in some rock wool. I can yeah. let it grow to full grown so I can harvest it mm. for a full salad. If it still doesn't get eaten, I could potentially let it go to seed and then plant it again or just throw it in the compost bin. Mm -hmm. wow. So <laughs> that's one really cool thing about having a seed starting station in yeah. general. Um, especially in a climate like this, you can kind of start your seeds in like February and then bring them outside because you can't you can't pop these little tiny delicate babies in the ground <laughs> it's still frosting outside yeah. and it's yeah. September yeah now, September. so I mean it's probably gonna snow next month right. Right. oh yeah. Right. yeah well like this week it's like 80 degrees is a high but on Saturday it's supposed to dump rain and be like 60 yeah so we just see a lot of fluctuations um this is another experimental crop. This one you can see is not seeding as um, lushly in here. And that's mostly because like, if you see the actual seed itself, it's very large. That's like the size of like a bean, you know? Um, this is nasturtium. 
Nasturtium is, as a microgreen, tastes like um, wasabi. As a baby green, tastes more like a uh, like a peppery, peppery green. Okay. But then once it's full grown, it has large watercress-like leaves, almost like uh, those water lilies you see yeah. floating in the back, yep. little large circles. Uh, we even have some popped in here as well in the tower. Um, the reason why I popped a couple in the tower is because they also have an edible flower. So they uh, grow a large, gorgeous, bright red edible flower. This variety is the Empress of India. So, yeah. Fancy. So, ooh, ooh. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple different kinds of them, but I went with that one because I thought the edible flower was the prettiest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically with the microgreens, um, this was definitely an investment where once I knew after talking with the um, one of the owners at the restaurant that I work at that he would buy these from me, that was when we decided to pull the trigger mm -hmm. and invest in the setup. Right, okay. Because I was like, hey, you don't like your supplier for this specific item. Mm. You don't like the who you get your spicy mix from. Yeah. Cool, let me grow that for you. Okay. And then that evolved into edible flowers, and then we may be growing um, some shiso, which is a Japanese herb used in a lot of different Asian cooking. Um, might be growing some of that soon. Some more so edible if, flowers. If you were to like that. recommend how someone like were to figure, if someone wanted to sell to a restaurant, would you just tell them to like go into a restaurant and say, "Hey, I'm growing some stuff. What do you need?" Is that what you? What, um, what would you recommend? Not necessarily. I. I would recommend cultivating a relationship somehow first. Get a job there. Get a job yeah. there. I mean, that's what I did. So Worked I, there for six months. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> I'll grow you microgreens. <laughs> oh, we don't need it. Please. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. All that time I wasted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the way that I went about it was I, I did get the job there, and then it was already something that we had been talking about and researching, mm -hmm for different markets before we moved here. And um, there is one other company in town called Vertical Harvest. Mm -hmm. They do a style of vertical growing, which is hydroponic. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting, it's, di it's definitely different than what we're doing. Um, and they supply a lot of the microgreens in the area. Okay. So, but they're the only game in town. Okay. So mm -hmm. wherever they are falling short is somewhere where someone like us can kind of come in and supplement. Yeah, if there, yeah, if there's already a market, then um, just seeing what they have and provide it, just slightly um, switching stuff up to create a niche. Um, just her talking to them and being in a relationship, she was able to ask on a regular basis, like what would go well. Like these bigger companies aren't able to do that, you know, as fast or get personal because they're already doing a lot of volume. So you right. can definitely niche down and. You know. Okay. Yeah, and each like in fine dining, um, usually you'll have like one main chef, right? He's like your head chef. Yeah. Um, from what I've experienced in like the sushi world is like you have a much smaller kitchen space and you have like one to two shoot sushi chefs working at a time. And everybody has their own preference as a chef. So it wasn't just the head chef that I needed to get approval for and like get interested in my product. Mm -hmm. It was each individual sushi chef that I wanted to get excited about. Look at these beautiful flowers. Look at the presentation that's possible here. Like try this different microgreen, like see how it tastes for you. So then that way I'm ensuring that it's actually going out and getting used every day because like your head chef owner isn't in the restaurant every minute of every day. Yeah, and if it's right. not getting used, they're not gonna buy from you. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. If it's sitting in the refrigerator and it's not going out, yeah. they're gonna be like, why do I need you? Okay. So, but yeah, back to your question is, for somebody who's looking to get into the market, um, I would go in and start dining at different places and looking at menus. Saying, okay, like what's on this person's menu that I could realistically provide? And some of the first questions that I got asked when I was pitching this to the owner, I was like, hey, here's some microgreens, is like, how long can I depend on you? Right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people in this town are seasonal. So I was like, are you gonna yeah. live here for three months and then right. move? Mm -hmm. Or are you here to stay? <clears throat> so are you dependable? What your pricing structure is, right? So one of these 10 by 10s for this 
basic spicy mix, I'm, I'm just charging $18, mm -hmm. right? The more the money makers are the borage flowers, which actually 99 cents. I raised mm. the price. So they're actually 99 cents a flower, okay. just under a dollar. Yeah. So, I mean, at 99 cents a flower, I sell 60 of these, I basically make 60 bucks. Okay, so, now, if you were to say, if you don't mind sharing, how much per month you could make on, you're making on the borage flower? Sure, so borage flower growing aeroponically on a tower specifically, right? Because you saw the plant that I showed you outside that was a week younger than this one. It was yeah. only about a foot tall. Um, this plant, I have one here and one on the other side, has been producing, I mean, over 60 flowers a week. Like, I deliver to them on Tuesdays and Fridays. So anything that flowers in on Wednesdays, Thursdays, any other day of the week, mm -hmm. that's either getting cut and just personal use or it's dying on the plant and then that pod is going to seed. Okay. Right? And we're letting it go to seed. So, I mean, I'm making, say, over 60, 200 bucks a month. Yeah, like 60 right. bucks a week, like yeah. 120 every two weeks. Yeah, sure, like $240 a month. Off of two plants. Off of two plants on a tower. <laughs> so if you're really yeah. maximizing your space, like let's say you had this whole thing growing borage, right? And you had the people buying it because we, we, yeah. we had so <laughs> much that we were harvesting that we couldn't even sell them that much because they wouldn't use it all and uh -huh. it'd be dead. So, like, what else can we do with it? We're drying it, we're making teas with it, we're throwing it on our own salads, like... I actually, I learned how to crystallize the flowers using egg white and castor sugar, which is fun. It makes them last, like, two weeks instead of a couple days. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. so, great um, in drinks. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the borage flowers, yeah, I haven't sold them on using them for cocktails yet. But these things will float in a cocktail like nobody's business. Oh, we yeah. Yeah. violently stirred up a <laughs> and drink it just, <laughs> and it just drown came it. back. Come on. <laughs> it just kept coming back. So, <laughs> so yeah, these are great. Um, but definitely, I think it's just like anything in business. It's about finding your niche. Yeah. You know, like there was this fine dining Japanese niche of right. edible flowers. Yeah. So it's just really having those conversations and also meeting with chefs where they're at. Like they're really happy with the daikon radish microgreens that they get. So I'm not gonna mess with that. Yeah. They're don't happy even with don't them. even try to beat them on price or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna try and. Yeah, like if if you love what you have, cool. But tell me what you're unhappy about and what you would like to have fixed. Great. One of the main complaints was that they're the spicy mix micros that they were getting were too big. So I was like, cool, well, let me give them to you a couple days sooner. So they're smaller. Okay. Easy yeah. fix. It's just, it's just super clutch to start with microgreens. Easiest, cheapest investment takes up the least amount of space. This was originally, like when you first saw it, it was behind our door in our bedroom <laughs> yeah. in a small nook. Yeah. So we kind of couldn't open the door all the way, but it was like, yeah, that's right. We're maximizing the space by food production. It's like, where in your house, in a corner, can you think of it as like, oh, I got, you know, a steady income of $200 here, $200 there, <laughs> you know, yeah. and just scaling and then eventually you already have the system of sprouting stuff down then once you get a tower now once it sprouts you're just putting in the tower letting it you know go now you have two storms um, streams of income at different times right. weekly and then you know if you're going leafy greens then every month <laughs> mm -hmm. you know so awesome well, totally cool. um yeah i think that covers it so Sweet. Sweet. Thank you guys. That's a lot. <laughs> Super epic. Yeah. That's a wrap. Thank you to David and Rebecca for sharing this amazing knowledge on their aeroponically grown herbs and vegetables. No soil at all. Can you believe that? That's pretty crazy. That just blows my mind. So go ahead and give this a thumbs up, this video a thumbs up. That'll really help me out. Comment below if you have any questions what you thought of the video, what you want to see me film next. I got some cool stuff coming up. And also subscribe if you want to get notified. Actually, you'll click the bell. Click the bell and subscribe if you want to get notified every time I post a video. And then I will just see, there's nothing left. I'll see you in the next video. This has been Pat Daly with TrueTransient.com. Coming at you from Jackson, Wyoming.
Peace out. Thumbs up. See ya.